Hi, Darcy. Thanks for the videos. So I wanted to see him loose so I could see what he naturally does without anybody riding him. It's just helpful to see what we can get out of him. So right when I start this, he does do a lateral gait before he started goofing around. And you, you're going to hear my dog in the background. He's always doing stuff when I'm doing videos. So there he's a little lateral. And then he's lateral there. And then he goes to do some trotting. Uh, so that means usually we can get a lot of gates out of them if they're lateral and they can trot. So here I'm going to show you he's lateral again right as he goes. Okay. Now here he is, a, he had a nice trot, then he cantered and he kind of swapped his lead in the back. That's usually just, it means their stifles are a little weak. It happens to a lot of horses as they go around the turns, if they're lateral, because when they lose their balance, they just do what they would normally do to catch themselves. And the, so the lateral horses will kind of either bunny hop, so I don't want you to think anything's wrong with them. And then they'll kind of swap their legs around. So that looks like it's normal for him. Uh, but building up his strength will help him to get better. And a lot of gated horses are a little weak in their stifles anyhow. So this is just uh, doing some hill work, some rehab, backing up, and pull work. But very pretty horse. Okay, so here he's just trotting. Uh, your horse does mess around with you a little bit. And, you know, some of the times when people are lunging and doing things, we kind of threaten them with the stick, but the horse knows we're not going to do anything. So with him, you might have to do it a little bit closer to the fence so it blocks him from doing something like that. And if he starts messing around, you know, then actually go up and, and tap him with the stick or run at his hindquarter to make him a little scared. Because what he does here, he's like, you're not going to get me. I don't think you're going to do anything, are you? No, you're not going to do anything. So there I would have just smacked him with the whip. Like, hey, dude, I need business and you better start doing it. Because otherwise he might keep messing with you. What I want to let you know, too, when a horse messes around with you, walls are helpful. So it doesn't look like you have a round pen. If you do, that's where I would work him so he can't get away with as much misbehaving with you. Otherwise, I would stay in a corner, which you're kind of there, but I'd move a little bit closer to the corner because that corner will help you if he's messing around. He can't get away, get away from you, and he won't be able to mess around as much, so you'll be able to get after him better. These fences, although people don't realize it, gives a lot of support to the horse on their outside, so it'll also help to balance this horse. Um, so... When you're going to canter, I would try to get it either from a walk or a trot because when they're lateral, like when they're pacing, it's much harder for the horse to get the canter. And I'm sure you want to get a nice departure on the when you're riding it. So it's best to teach it from a walk or a trot. You can always use a little pole or a fence if the horse is having problems picking it up, but it looks like your horse is pretty good with the departure. And then every time it falls out of the canter, like when it bunny hopped and lost the lead behind, just let it go back to trotting, trot a couple of steps or a circle, and then ask for the canter again. And then as you canter, the faster they get, the more they get kind of uncoordinated, and then their back end start to swing around, and they get lateral, and then they pop that lead in the back. So when your horse canters, you wanna to try to get a slow canter, and when the horse is cantering well, stop and then walk over, pet your horse, tell him what a good girl or good boy it is. And then after a little break, ask them again. And then over time, you'll get more and more because they have to understand. These gated horses sometimes are so confused what they're supposed to do with their legs. And so, you know, their legs just uh, do things depending on the terrain and then on that horse's balance. So you want to help this horse to learn to get balanced and stronger. So... Poles will help, going over the cross rail to get the canter will help, and then once your horse gets better, we can put poles around when you're lunging, and that will help that, lower, uh, that horse get a better canter and rock back more on its back end. Okay, so that's just some groundwork help. So now let's go on to the riding. Okay, so now from seeing your horse loose, I see your horse can be lateral and also uh, more square going. So that means your horse can be pacey, but it can also be trotty. Those things are great, but those things also make it more difficult. So if your horse is pacey and trotty, they can do a lot of gates. That means they can usually do a flat walk, a running walk, possibly. 
a saddle gait, which is like a slow rack. They might be able to do a faster rack and they might be able to do a fox trot. The hard part is getting your horse to do those things and then understanding which gait to do when. So we have to create cues so that horse knows what to do. And then we have to help the horse get that gait by framing it correctly and using its neck and back to help us. Okay, so that's the good news is that your horse can do a lot of stuff. The bad news is if you can't feel it, it's hard to tell which things they're doing, especially if they're doing oh. foxtrot or step pace. They both are a little bouncy, but it's kind of a soft bounce. So that can be very confusing for people too. So video helps, and, you know, even if you're not sending it to me every time. If you're not sure, put that video up and ride back and forth and then look at it while you're riding because then you'll be able to see, oh, he is doing it correctly or uh, no, the horse is not doing it correctly and I'm doing the wrong gait and then you'll know what to do to fix it. So the first thing I see is the horse's head is too high and I know you said that in your uh, message. So what we wanna do to start off with is not even working on the gait, but just uh, working the horse at a standstill and getting it to understand the bit. The bit is fine. Uh, it's fine to work them in a snaffle or uh, bitless or hackamore. Any of those things are fine, but they have to learn to give to pressure. And that's what it looks like his problem is, is that he doesn't know to give. And again, I'm sorry if I'm saying it's a boy and it's a girl, uh, but it doesn't know to give to pressure. So this walk that you have right here, it's very nice walk, and that would be your flat walk, okay? Your horse's legs are separated here. Here, it's not pacey, it's not trotty, and your horse has some overreach. It's kind of reaching into that front hoof pocket, and then sometimes a little bit over it. Okay, and it looks like your horse is broke well on the ground. You got a nice bend, it's going a nice speed, and it's keeping that same rhythm. So all of those are good things, but we wanna try and bring your horse's head down more here. And that will help with the horse relaxing its neck and its back. With the gated horses, they will change depending on the footing and then depending if it slopes up or if it slopes down. So anytime the arena slopes down even a little, the horse will usually get more pacey. If it slopes up, the horse is going to get a little bit more trotty. So if the horse is tends to be lateral in the arena, because they can be different in the arena versus the trail. So if the horse is more on that pacey side, then as we're working at increased speed, it's much easier to do it on the incline. And then any time it goes downhill, you want to half halt and slow that horse down. So what I would do first is teach this horse lateral flexion and vertical flexion. And I'm gonna attach a video so you see how to do it. And then once you try it, if you're having problems, you can send me a video and I'll tell you what to do. But you wanna make sure that horse will stand still and give to your right rein and give to your left rein. And a lot of times in the beginning, they're just gonna spin around because they don't understand. You don't wanna release on the rein until the horse figures it out. So they stand still and they give to the bit. So that means he stands still and he turns his head and he's not pulling on the bit. So you have to wait a while for that horse to figure it out. So sometimes you'll spin three circles, sometimes it's 20 or 30 circles till the horse figures it out. So you'll do it with the right rein, then you'll do it with the left rein, and you're just gonna go back and forth. You wanna make sure that horse is really good at it before you try to do the vertical flexion. So if when you do it, your horse is just spinning over and over again, it means you're not, you don't want to move on because the horse doesn't understand. They're just guessing. So like the first day, you might do the uh, lateral flexion and do it for, I would say, like 20 minutes, then give your horse a break and either just stand there or just walk around, you know, on a looser rein. And then do it again for, you know, maybe another 15 or 20 minutes, okay? So that hour that you ride that horse, you're mostly just working on that lateral flexion. Once the horse gets that down well and it understands every time you pick up on one rein, it's supposed to turn its head to the side and stand still, then you're ready to do the vertical flexion. But if you try it too soon and you don't have good timing and feel, you won't get it. So you might see us trainers do that stuff and we do it pretty quick. 
because we we can we can get the message to the horse and they're less confused but most people their timing's a little bit slower and the horse gets confused very easily so get your lateral flexion down once you get that then you're going to go to vertical flexion where you pick up just a little bit on one rein and then you pick up on the other rein and you just hold what will happen is the horse will either throw its head up or down or it will just brace and pull against you your job is not to move your arms, but brace your arms as much as you can and just hold and wait. If the horse tries to go to the right, you push him with your right leg. If the horse tries to go to the left to get away from the pressure, you hold with your left leg. If the horse backs up, you let it back up, unless it's flying backwards, <laughs> but otherwise you let it back up and you keep the same pressure. Don't release because if the horse backs up and you release, then the horse thinks that's the answer. Okay. So what you're trying to teach is when I put pressure on both reins, you're supposed to drop your head down and stop pulling on the bit. So what you'll do is, again, you'll come in the arena, you got your lateral flexion pretty good, but you'll practice that first. And then you're going to go to your vertical flexion. And you're going to do this over and over again, the same thing. Maybe do it for 20 minutes, and then sit there, take a break, or just walk around. And then do it for 20 more minutes. So what you're trying to do is make sure that every time you pick up on two reins, that horse understands to put its head down. So again, we do it with one rein, the lateral flexion. Then when we go to vertical flexion, we use one rein and then the other, but not as much pull on it. And then once the horse gets that down, you just start picking up on two reins. So we're teaching the steps to get there. So if we get that horse soft in the bridle, get it doing vertical flexion, getting its head down, all of a sudden you're gonna be able to get a lot more gates with them because we're setting up the correct frame. Now, once you can get the vertical flexion at a standstill, your next job is not to start gating or doing anything else. It's just to start walking and stopping, okay? And what you wanna do is you'll, you can walk like this and you're gonna walk, stop, hold pressure on both reins, wait for your horse to drop its head down. Okay? And you're not pulling it down. You're trying to teach it to get its head down by holding pressure. So a lot of people will try to pull their hands down here, or do weird things with their arms. Try not to. Just hold the pressure here. Teach the horse to drop its head down. So then when you're riding, you'll be able to adjust everything here and you won't have to move your hands funny and that way it won't hurt your elbows or your shoulders. Okay. So what you're going to do is walk around five to ten steps you're gonna breathe out, hold pressure to stop the horse, and then keep holding until your horse drops its head and it's not pulling on the bit. Once it does that, give a big release or kind of just drop your reins and hold on to the buckle and give that horse a break. We wanna make sure that your horse really understands when you're holding pressure on both reins, it needs to drop its head down here. You're gonna do that over and over again, okay? No other work over and over again and then when you give the horse breaks you can walk around just on a loose rein but no gating or anything else okay because we're trying to make sure this horse understands all you'll keep doing is walking around and stopping walk five to ten steps stop the horse five to ten steps stop the horse but every time you stop the horse the horse needs to bring its head down once you get that really well that every time you go to stop and you're starting to put pressure on the reins the horse is already bringing its head down you know that horse understands what it's supposed to do. The next step is that then you're gonna to try to get the horse's head down at a walk. So as you're walking, you'll pick up contact on both reins. The horse will think it's supposed to stop. The way you get it not to stop is when you pick up on both those reins, you're gonna close your legs around the horse. So you're gonna squeeze lightly with your calves. No, not too hard that it makes the horse go faster, but enough that the horse knows to keep walking. If you did all the previous steps really well, this won't be hard. But if you skipped around and kind of, you know, cheated a little bit and the horse really doesn't understand, then this is going to be harder. So you're walking, you start holding on the reins, you start holding with your calves, and you hold that pressure until that horse drops its head down. Now again, the horse we'll try to get away from the pressure. So what will the horse do? The horse will go either direction, so left or right, you block with your legs. Sometimes they'll stop and back up if you don't have enough leg on them, and otherwise they just pull. So what your job is to hold that horse straight, hold them right in between your legs and your hands, keep the same pressure, don't start pulling harder or fighting with the horse, you keep the same pressure, and then all of a sudden, the horse will drop its head down. Now if the horse makes any 
try to get its head down. So say he's walking like this and he's pulling and then he drops it just a little bit, but he's pulling, release your reins because the horse is going in the right direction and you're trying to let him know, yes, that's right. That's not perfect, but that's right, okay? If you do that, it'll make this easier. If you just hold and hold until the horse puts its head down and releases, it'll be harder in the beginning. So you're trying to reward even any little try of him bringing his head down. Okay, then you pick up the reins, you start walking around again, hold pressure with your hands, hold pressure with your calves, keep that horse straight, wait for that horse to drop its head down just a little bit and then give. You're gonna repeat that over and over until you see that he understands when you're picking up the reins, he's supposed to drop his head. Once you got that down, then you're gonna ask for more. So I would think you might have to do that five or 10 times. Then as you're walking around, pick up your reins, hold pressure at the same time you're holding pressure with your legs. And as that horse brings its head down, don't release. You're asking for more. So you want that horse's head down more and you will release on the reins. Do that five to 10 times and then you're gonna ask for more. So that means you're gonna do the same thing. Hold pressure with your reins and your legs. Wait for that horse to drop its head down more and now you want it to stop pulling on the bit. So you're gonna hold until it's not pulling anymore. And that second you feel the horse get just a little bit lighter, release onto your reins. Do that over and over again at the walk. Once you get that consistent and every time you pick up on the reins, the horse puts its head down, then you're gonna start walking around and you're gonna constantly try to keep that horse's head down, okay? The horse will, this won't be hard for them because you see when they walk around a field, they don't walk around like this, okay? So you want that horse to have more of a neutral head carriage because that's gonna help you get this horse gating much better. Once we get the horse to understand, then we can start doing things with it. So then you're gonna walk around, try to keep that horse's head down all the time. Once it's down, you'll loosen up on the rein. So you'll push your hand forward or give with your hands. But anytime that horse brings its head back up, you're gonna hold pressure and ask it to bring it down, okay? In the end, we want it that if you hold pressure on the rein, the horse drops its head down. If you kind of pick and lift up on the rein, the horse will pick its head up. And that's not hard to teach, so don't worry about that part, okay? But the whole problem with your horse's gait is its frame and its head is up. This horse has a lot of talent, so all we have to do is actually get its head down, relax its back, Go the right speed and you're gonna have a lot of gates once we show you how to ride it. Very nice rider, okay? Very pretty position. The only thing I'd pick on is to sit up a little taller, but I do the same thing, right? It's more relaxed, but if you wanna make it look prettier, but your head's good, you're always looking up, your leg's in the correct position. It looks like you've taken some lessons and somebody's taught you very well. So very pretty rider. Once we get this gait, it is going to be beautiful. So this is your flat walk. Okay, so you'll see you're shifting back and forth in the saddle. Everything's great with your leg. Now, some people might look when they're watching us ride these gated horses because we'll have some motion in the saddle because the horse pushes us. So our leg will wiggle around and our hands will wiggle around. But our objective is to try to stay as still as we can because the horses have so much motion themselves. Now, as he's walking around, again, you'll see him kind of stepping up into his front hoof pocket. So as we do some of the gates, and we're watching him, we go, oh, he's probably gonna have a good flat walk and a running walk because he can reach up with his back end. So the only thing here that I would like is his head down here. So lower and more relaxed, okay? So as you're trying to get his head down, if he's not bringing it down, you wanna make sure you have more contact on that rein to create more pressure. So we wanna make sure if you have pressure like this, this horse knows to drop its head down. Right now you get some slack in the reins and then it holds and some slack, but the horse doesn't understand to give to the pressure. So that's why it's not bringing its head down. It's not that it's being bad or anything else. The horse just doesn't understand. So what he has to understand is every time you put any contact on his mouth is that he's supposed to drop his head down, relax his neck and relax his back. But again, this is a pretty good speed for your flat walk. Now here you're a little bit faster. The horse starts going lateral with its legs and that means it's starting to move the legs on the same side more together. So you kind of went to a step pace and then a pace and then you came back. So this speed is gonna be more towards your running walk in the beginning. This or just a little bit faster. So again, you do have the speeds. The horse has the separation of the legs it's just that it needs its head to become lower, okay? 
but there it goes lateral right there. So that's how we know, oh, we could get a running walk. We could get a saddle gait from this horse because it does have some lateral movement to it. Again, this is a good speed more for your running walk at this point in time. Because we see as soon as he goes a little bit faster, what's he do? He starts pacing and step pacing, okay? So moving those legs together. Now, the mistake here was you stopped, and I know you tried to back up, and it wasn't on the video, but I can tell what you're doing. So, again, this is the good speed. All we got to do is teach that horse to get its head down first. So that's why it's so important to spend days to weeks teaching that horse really to do it well, because then you have the gait. It's not like you have to do anything crazy to get it. So you can see the bounce. That's how you know your step pacing. So when you stop to back the horse up, your timing has to be faster, because you do it slowly probably because he's pulling on the bit and he doesn't understand so well and so it's not fast enough so the horse isn't making the connection he's just like oh i just stop and back up now but it's really meaning nothing to the horse when they pace like that and you really want, want them to understand no i don't want you to do that anymore you have to slam on the brakes you have to stop immediately so let's watch it again and I'm gonna tell you, you don't wanna let the horse do any steps of the pace or they think it's okay. So I'm gonna yell out stop when I would have stopped. Coming sooner or later. Stop. So I would have stopped, see like now, probably 10 or 20 steps ago. But you stopped after it did a whole bunch of steps. So that horse doesn't know that's the wrong answer. And then the reason why it's open in its mouth when it's doing this embracing is because he just doesn't understand the bit. It's like me in front of the computer in the beginning. I'm like, I don't really get this. And I just start guessing and pushing buttons until something actually works for me. So that's the horse is like, I don't understand this bit. So I'm going to pull back against it because you're pulling on me. So he doesn't understand to give. And then you released when he was pulling on you. So that told that horse when you were stopped that he was doing the right thing. So you don't want to release anymore until he drops his head down and then you can back up. But you have to stop so much faster than you did. Let me skip ahead again, okay? So as soon as the horse starts pacing, slam on the brakes. I would have shoved my feet out in front of me. I'd keep your hands higher when you do this, lift them up, you'll be stronger. So see his head's up? You want that line from the bit going right up to your elbow. So raise that hand up when he does it. Lean back as far as you can, shove that foot forward and push on that stirrup so you have something to push again and you can stop him faster. And then I want you to back up pretty fast, not slow, because this is not supposed to be a reward. This is like, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. So you want to slam on the brakes, back up as fast as you can, five to 10 steps, and then immediately go forward. So no rest at all. Okay, so there he's pacing. I would have already stopped back up and then went forward again. But now he's moving better. And that's going to be the speed of your running walk, okay? Don't worry about that little tripping. He's got to get used to his boots too. So when he's doing this speed, don't try to move your hands with him. A lot of people do, and it creates so much motion. And then if you with the bit, it's actually like releases on them, it pulls on them. It releases on them, it pulls on them. So... I wouldn't move your hands as much as I see them moving. And I know you're trying to follow the bit, but with these guys, it's much easier if you just keep them still. Yeah, and just if he raises his head, you raise your hand up to follow it so he can't get away from the bit because that's what he's trying to do, okay? But that is your speed of your running walk. You have it. We just got to get his neck and his back relaxed. Now, body position-wise, because I haven't said a lot, because, again, you're a good rider, I don't think you need to change much. Your horse goes from a little trotty to a little pacey, and that would take a lot of, like, tilting forward, tilting back, tilting forward, tilting back. So I would just ride him with a neutral body position, which you're doing, and then I think we won't have to change your pelvis much. We just got to change his headset and his body carriage. So that's more of the speed of your flat walk in this video. So the only thing I would do is just not follow so much with your arms. Just try to keep them a little bit still. There he speeds up. So again, I would have stopped already. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and show you where I would have stopped. Okay, so here we go. Stop. Back up. And then I would have gone off again. But see how many steps he got, and he's pulling on the bit, and he just doesn't understand that's the wrong answer. And then you gotta stop. You slowly dribble into it, 
and then your backup is just kind of slow. So we gotta do all that faster so the horse understands not to do that. Once he gets better and he's not pacing so much, then if he paces, you can just slow him down and drop his head down more. But for now, we want him to really understand that's the wrong thing to do. So he paces right in the beginning and then you stop. So he paces, you stop, but see he's pulling and it's very slow. So he's getting to rest and he's backing up very slow and he's pulling on the bit. So we have to fix all that. And then when you walked off, he's just like, yeah, I'll go. So we have to get him quicker and you're gonna have to get after him a little bit. So I again, I would have already stopped. So let me show you where I would have stopped. I'm gonna scroll back. Okay, so there's your backup. I would have walked off faster. Now he's going faster. Stop, I would have stopped, backed up. But you got at least 10 steps. Yep, now he goes back to step pacing. So it's not a horrible bounce, but you'll see you're bouncing a little bit. And then there it looks like it's downhill. So he got his head up and he started swinging his legs more. Okay, so now he's just pacing. But again, your horse doesn't understand. You don't want that. They don't know what it feels like up on their back, so they have no idea. They just do what the terrain and what's easiest for them. Because why work hard if you don't have to? That's the horse's motto. Like, I'm, I'm not going to work hard. If you're going to bring my food, I'm not going to walk over there to get it. They're very lazy in the end. So you want to teach him, like, no, if you pace, I give you more work. And it's not pleasant work. There's no rest or anything. So if the backing up doesn't work, then sometimes I stop and I spin them around. I'm doing anything to get into their brain that no, do not pace. Never pace when I'm on your back, because if you do, I make it very uncomfortable for so you. So his backup needs to get much better, okay? And you want to be able to pull and then just add leg and then put pressure, release, pressure, release as that horse is backing up. So I already would have stopped and backed up and then go forward again. And maybe you're trying to get like that saddle gate. So your horse did get lateral and then he actually converted to the trot right there. So let's watch that again. Because your horse has a lot of talent. So again, the terrain affects what they do. So your horse was trotting more there and kind of a little fox trot. And then you hit a hard trot. So your horse, you know, is good and bad. He, He's not doing the right thing, but he's like showing you all the things he can do. And I'm just like, wow, this is gonna be a cool horse. So there, that's much better with his head and neck. But to see, he puts it up and then he starts swinging his legs and going lateral. So even when this horse canters, if we can get that head down now and teach him what to do with his gait, then when you go to canter, you'll be able to adjust him to help you because when you're cantering, if this horse throws his head up, he's more likely going to get lateral and fall out of that canter or swap his lead in the back. So with him, we need to get his neck and head and back all relaxed so you'll be able to adjust him and help him stay in the correct form so he stays on the correct gait or if so he stays cantering correctly. But there, his head was much better. It was much more relaxed right there. I'm going to see if I can pause it. See that? That's beautiful. That's where we need him. And for now, I would like it even just a little bit lower, but this would be good if we could get this because this is gonna help you get the gates. It's much more relaxed, you're soft on the reins, he's not pulling, and then he can use his body. Better. It looks like you're you know, on a decline and an incline. It's hard to, for me to tell with some people's videos, so you can always tell me like, yes, gay, you're correct, or no, that's totally wrong. So again, when you're on an incline, that makes the horse more trotty. So that would help with a pacey horse. If you're on a decline, that makes the horse more lateral or pacey. So that would help more with a trotty horse. The hard part is your horse does both. He can trot and he can pace. So he do does different things on the terrain, okay? So when you're going here, and I will slow it down and show it to you, you might think your horse is doing a saddle gait, but it's actually fox trotting and then it gets closer towards a trot. So it gets a little bit more bouncy. So see that little wiggle in the saddle? So it's kind of towards the saddle gait, but it's just a little bit kind of in between the saddle gait and the fox trot. And people are like, what? Oh yeah, these horses can do lots of things <laughs> depending what they do. Okay. Now here, your horse is more lateral. So, 
So when you watch the video, see if you can see the difference between his legs. So now his left uh, hind and left front are moving closer together. Before, when you were coming the other direction, he was moving more on a diagonal, which means more towards the trot. So here you are getting, you know, close to doing a saddle gait. The hard part is a lot of people do this. They, they just walk slow and then they can't get the horse to do any other gates except this. What you're trying to do when you're finishing a horse and trying to make it the best it can be is that it just gates. And then when you go faster, it just gates faster. So it can do all other gates, but you never want it to have to go through the trot or the pace, or you don't want to be gating down the road and then it keeps falling out of the gate. So we have to help him stay in that gate by half halting, using our weight, using our body position and using that horse's head and uh, neck, you know, using their neck and back to get it relaxed. So here I would like his head lower and more relaxed, but then we got to be careful he doesn't fall into the trot. Okay, so here you come again. So again, watch your horse's legs. So there he's going more towards a trot. So you're bouncing more. And then he switched a little bit at the end. So that's the good thing. Your horse has talent, but it's, you know, diagonal there. And then it starts going lateral towards the end. So here you're coming again. Now this direction, your horse got a little bit more diagonal. So now you're trotting and you're bouncing. So you stopped, which was good. But see, your backup is too slow. And don't look at your horse's head. Stare up over their ears. So again, your response to when he's doing the wrong thing is too slow. Now there he's lateral again. So he figured it out. But again, you want your response to be a little bit quicker. And you don't want the horse to do so many steps. So as soon as it trots one step, you're stopping backing up. As soon as it paces one step, you're stopping backing up and immediately go forward faster. But I know you're videotaping here. But I'm supposed to pick on you. That's my job. <laughs> Okay, but we see your horse can do a saddle gait, but we wanna teach your horse that it can do all these gates. So there's your canter. That's pretty good. He's just a little bit tense and crooked, <laughs> but not bad. But I would have your hand just a little bit higher and half halting, but your horse is very balanced. It's doing a very nice canter there. So we see that's gonna be nice. But again, we need the head down a little bit more. So now you're trying to get that saddle gate in the arena. You got it, but of course his head is too high. But the reason your horse keeps having issues is because it doesn't have its foundation. It doesn't have its slower gates to build on. So all of this will be much easier once we teach your horse to flat walk and a running walk, and then your saddle gait or slow rack will be after that. Right now, you, you have all the speeds, we just don't have the correct framework to help them enough. I can't tell if these are repeat videos, but you got a lot of videos. But now your horse is more towards, you know, a fox trot, and then a, going towards a hard trot when it's bouncy. and you got a nice canter going all the way around the arena, I would try to get it just a little bit more collected. And I would, you know, get that horse's head down a little bit more and that will help you much more. So if your horse can canter around the arena now, what I would do when you're working on the canter is try to teach it to canter in a circle because they really have to learn their balance because they won't have the fence to support them. And if it keeps falling apart when you're cantering around the circle, then just canter a couple of steps and walk and then canter a couple of steps and walk. Our steps in getting this horse to gait is just spending time teaching the horse to give to the bit or put its head down. People call it many different things, but we want it to give to the bit. We want it to get a better stop and back up. We're Once we get its head down, you, we can start practicing the gates and you're going to start following that arena routine. If you don't have one, I have that online. And you're gonna come in the arena and just walk around first five or 10 minutes on a loose rein, get that horse to relax. And then what I would do is start doing the routine, the routine and just do it at a walk first. So you've already taught the horse to get its head down. That's all going well. 
So you're gonna walk around and do the routine, which is lots of circles, leg yielding, and teaching that horse to really get supple. Do that all at a slow walk with the horse's head down. So it has to keep its head down the whole time. You're gonna go both directions, like it says in the arena routine, and then you're gonna stop and rest. But remember, every time you stop this horse, make sure it puts its head down. And every time I stop, I like to stop them and back them up. So they always think when she puts pressure on it and she's stopping me, I'm supposed to back off of that bit. And then they get actually really good on their back end and light in the front end. After you give them a break, you're gonna to go to your flat walk and you're gonna get its head down and you're gonna start flat walking. What I would do if you can is flat walk them in a big circle, like a 20 meter circle, instead of going around the whole arena and keep a slight bend in that horse because that'll help keep that horse's legs separated. And then put a timer on your phone and I want you to flat walk one direction for five minutes. If he's tired then, then you can stop and give him a break. Otherwise, you're just gonna do a turn on the forehand, go the other direction and flat walk for five minutes. After that, give him a little break. So that means just a couple of minutes. Then again, when you shorten up, the horse should get its head down and you go off and you go back to your flat walk. Flat walk once around the circle, then go up to the speed of your running walk, which you already have. We just need that horse's head down. Then you're gonna do the running walk for five minutes Give a break if tired. If not, you're gonna turn around, go the other way and do a running walk the other direction, okay? Then the horse can have a break. That's all I want you to do. I don't want you to work on that saddle gate at all. We wanna make sure your flat walk and your running walk are really good before you start going more for that speed. Because if we do, if we set this foundation and get those things done, then your horse, as you go faster, won't fall out of gate as much. But right now, He's not as conditioned as much and we're trying to help him build it up and not wear him out. So I would do that and then send me a video so I can see if your flat walk and your running walk is good. I would give that, you know, maybe about a month. And then if it's all going well, then we can start doing that uh, saddle gait as well. And we do the saddle gait. All you're gonna do is speed up a little bit more from your running walk and your horse should have it. And what you're doing is when he's flat walking and running walk, you should have that head shake. That's how you know they're doing those gates, that the head will come up and down. When you go to that saddle gate, which you've already been doing, you won't see that head move. And you'll have just a little jiggle in the saddle. You shouldn't have an up and down. If you have an up and down bounce, you're probably fox trotting or it's more on the trotty side. And then we might elevate that horse's head back up just to help it get a little bit more lateral, okay? So I know that's a lot of information. This is like Gay's crash course on gating, but you have a great horse. It's just teaching it to give it to the bit, lower its head, relax its back, go in the right speeds, and then building its condition up and waiting a little bit more before we start working on that saddle gait. After you do your running walk, give it a break, do your canter, but start cantering it in a circle and start working on that horse's balance. When you make the turns, it might pop its lead in the back. If it does, you just come back to a walk, start again. And you keep half halting every time your butt hits that saddle to try to keep that horse cantering slow. The slower they canter, the better they can hold it, and then you'll start to get more of that rocking horse canter. But again, the secret to your horse is that we have to get his head down and his body relaxed, okay? With you, everything's pretty good to sit up a little taller and uh, keep your eyes up and when you're stopping and backing up try not to stare at your horse but stare kind of through his ears and not down at him because that will help him as well and help him to understand what you want him to do and then just getting your timing fast down. anytime he trots or he paces immediately slam on the brakes like i said feet out in front of you lean back back up as fast as you can and immediately walk off and go again. If you take a break and say you were doing a running walk and you're like, he, he did such a beautiful job, you stopped and gave him a break because that always means yes to the horse. That's the right answer. So anytime your horse is doing a good job, sure, you can stop, give it a break for a minute or so, and then pick up and go back to work. But anytime you do that and you give a break, always start out with your flat walk, then go to your running walk. Don't try to go right up to the running walk speed because when the horse isn't conditioned and doesn't understand, that's when they start trotting or pacing because they're like, I don't know what to do and this is easier, so I'll just do this. So always go through your flat walk, walk like once around, then start doing your running walk again. Okay, any questions, you just let me know.